This episode of Bouts Talking Bouts is brought to you by Bare Knuckle Betting Shark. Winning parlays. If you're looking for them in BKFC, you got to be checking out BK Bet Shark. Here's the thing. $50 buys, you get a personalized bet slip. It's based on your own budget. You can be flexible. It is what works for you. And this guy's got the receipts. You can check out all the winning tickets. You can peep them, and you can do so at Bare Knuckle Betting Shark. Check him out on Instagram and get with it. Got them personalized betting slips going on, $50 buys. All right, on this episode of Bare Knuckle Radio, very excited to be talking to an individual who competes at BKFC 56, which goes down on December the 2nd, and a very intriguing fight with Jeremy Stevens knuckling up and towing the line against Jimmy Rivera and Great Heaven Jimmy on Bare Knuckle Radio for the first time. How's your day going, man? You having a solid one? Yeah, man, I had training this morning. Now I'm at the station. I'm about to go work after uh, we do this interview. <laughs> so... Always a busy day, nonstop. I was going to say, is that the kind of schedule you like, just having, like, multiple things on the go? Because, yeah, I mean, quite the full plate preparing for a BKFC fight and being a police officer concurrently. Yeah, um, no, I mean, it is what it is. It's a part of life. you got to work, too. Uh, you know, you don't know. Like, it, it's been tough getting the a fight. I know my last fight was in May, and I was hoping to do a quick turnaround, but... Unfortunately, you know, like we went to like four or five people until someone accepted the fight. So that kind of sucked, um, you know, going through that. So we're just, it's just glad to get an opponent, be on a huge card. You know, uh, Dave Feldman definitely said an awesome card next Saturday. So looking forward to being on that. And it's, it's good to have an opponent that say, that says yes and wants to take the fight. I was going to say, I feel like you're on a similar wavelength to me because I was going to ask, like, if it, almost worked out in the best possible way just with you readying to compete on what a lot of people are saying is, you know, the biggest BKFC event they've done so far. Like, did it ultimately work out, just, you know, opponents falling out, etc.? Yeah, it kind of worked out for it. You know, sometimes being patient helps. Um, you know, I obviously would love, you only got to fight once this year so far, I would love to fight three times. It's just one of those things where, um, it's just tough to, I guess at this point right now, find, find opponents and um, there's not a lot of people that want to fight me. I mean, I can't really blame them either, but at the same time, it'd be nice to get some, uh, some fights. Yeah, I mean, I imagine that would be frustrating because different information I've seen on you. I mean, it seems like you're really looking to get a run going and contend for different titles. And it seems like it's even to a scale where you had to like pursue opportunities in other divisions because I was seeing the Stevens fight is listed as a lightweight bout on the BKFC website. Yeah, I just think uh, he's either really out of shape or just didn't feel like cutting weight. I don't, I don't, I mean, I don't know. They said he doesn't want to go to forty five, so I'm like, alright, let's do a fifty five. I mean, I still got to cut weight for it. I don't have to cut as much weight, but I have to cut a decent amount of weight. So I was like, whatever, we'll do whatever weight class. I just, uh, you know, I like it because he's the kind of the type of style fighter that I like to fight and uh you know he's another big name so it's not like I'm fighting someone that has uh that's not well known you know what I mean so I think it's fucking great that we're gonna go in there and beat the shit out of each other and get paid for it yeah and an incredible fight on paper and I mean similar career arcs and as far as like previous tenures with the UFC albeit in different weight divisions is this someone that you I guess, saw as a potential opponent, or maybe not because of the aforementioned, I guess, weight class differentiation and all? Nah, not at all. I mean, uh, I had no idea he was going to sign the bare knuckle. I know he did one boxing match, uh, you know, looking it up afterwards with Aldo, which I, I, I don't remember Aldo won it. It was a draw or Aldo won the fight. I forgot. It was a weird fight. It was a short, like, five-round fight, too. Um, but with that said, I didn't have no idea he would actually step in and do this. Um, which is cool. I think I think he might have the right style mindset to do it, but not everybody does. Um, we know we saw Eddie. You know, I got to train with Eddie, getting ready for his Chad Mendes fight. He definitely has the right mentality. And then you saw guys like Luke Rockhold who came in here, who doesn't have it. And you have guys like Mike Perry who have the fucking mentality. And so uh, it's a cool thing to uh, be with their experience. Yeah, and just an interesting. Phone call. I just uh, got my phone. Do not disturb. I apologize about that. No, no worries, man. It's all good. I mean, I imagine a lot of people are wanting to, you know, get in touch with you. I mean, you got a lot on the go. You got a big fight coming up and everything. So, yeah, no worries. I guess one of the things I did want to. Just work. 
<laughs> it's probably work. It's probably not even once someone talking about the fight, but hey, are you doing this or, or something like that? Because, you know, I do a couple multiple things besides having two kids and being a husband. I got, uh, you know, a uh, school in, in uh, Tyre Showman School in Short Hills. I have um, my police career. I'm training for a fight. I got two little girls at home. I mean, man, it's it's nonstop. So uh, when we do get the breaks, I do enjoy the breaks and love spending time with the kids and uh, doing stuff. I don't, I guess, you know, at this time when your kids are younger, you don't get as much me time, but you get a lot more back when they get older, which makes sense. Um, so I'm just, you know, I'm enjoying the kids now a little because, you know, they're not going to be little forever. So with that said, they're, they're so funny and so cute when they're little. And then all of a sudden they become teenagers and you just like, fuck, where the time go? So I'm enjoying it now. Yeah, that's incredible. I mean, I imagine that really helps just with like the strenuous nature of what you're doing, not even just with bare knuckle fighting, but just the stresses with police work. I mean, I would think that that really gives you a sense of groundedness and perspective after like hard days and whatnot. I mean, not to say that being a parent isn't difficult. I mean, trying in its own sort of way, but maybe you get what I'm saying. Yeah, no, I definitely agree. I mean, I think, um, I think the, it depends on your mentality and stuff like that. Um, some people that get in law enforcement, they get in because of the money and the job and benefits. Some, it's, you know, a family trait. Uh, you know, myself, I got into it because it's something I enjoyed. Um, it's definitely interesting. I don't find, I feel like I find it more stressful dealing with owning a business and running my school than I do actually with policing. You know what I mean? Like, when I clock out, I'm out. I'm done. When you run a business, it's 24 7, so it doesn't really stop. So I, I find it, I think, actually being an officer less stressful. I mean, there's definitely a lot more T's and I's. You gotta, you know, cross and dot. But besides that, it's cool. I, I think it's at this time now, policing needs to, um, it's more like a guardian and where we're trying to build up better relationship in the community. And it's one of the reasons why I came into it because. You know, a lot of times you get a great group, like we have a great group here, but all of a sudden you get like one bad apple and people don't judge you about the other 50 officers you have. They judge you on that one bad apple and that's not everybody. So that's like one of the main reasons coming in and and uh, and doing this. Not to mention, you know, it's great other perks and benefits to it. And I got a family, kids, and I want them to make sure, that, you know, they're taken care of as well with, you know, health care and all that. But uh, it is, uh, it's definitely interesting and it's, I... I not saying every call is fun, but I do enjoy it, and I do work with a great group of guys, and my boss, Chief Lake, knows a, a great boss and very proactive, so it's great having him as a, as a boss and a mentor. Yeah, it's cool the language you're using. I would feel like you'd be able to curate a great sense of community with what you're doing as a police officer, but also what you do as like a martial arts instructor and maybe even as a competitor to a degree as well. That seems very important to you, I guess, fostering those really positive communal vibes. So love to hear that, man. Yeah, man. I mean, literally, I love teaching. I love getting people in shape and teaching kids how to defend themselves. Unfortunately, it's, you know, it's on those cusps where we're more adults want to protect themselves of what's going on in the world. And kids get bullied all the time. And yeah, I guess it's always up and down. Sometimes it's really bad. I think one of the biggest things is obviously cyberbullying and kids online. But then you know, on the other aspect to help people out, you know, was – I was doing this and being able to uh, speak to people and help them out in the community. And uh, our chief is very big on community events, and we do a lot of that as well. Um, so that's another cool thing aspect of the of the job. Yeah, no, love you love hearing that, man. It's great stuff for sure, and everything. I guess like a fight related thing, I kind of wanted to touch on just with it being like a I guess thing that's really popping up in the news lately and having noticed you have wins under both the Bellator and, you know, World Series of Fighting banners, which has since become PFL. Like, what are your thoughts on that PFL and Bellator merger? Um, I think it's uh, definitely a right step. I don't, um, I mean, I, I guess in a way they're, they're trying to, you're trying to compete with the UFC right now. And you got two other organizations that are pretty big organizations trying to compete with the UFC and I think they're doing it, but I think for them to do better is to come together and with them come together and PFL buying Bellator, I just think it's going to make it that much better. I mean, like everybody's talking about right off the back, like cyborg and, and, uh, and Kayla Harrison. I'm like, like that's a, that's a fight I want to see. And I mean, it's an awesome fight. I can't wait to see that. And they're talking about this 
you know, I don't know if it was 2024 or 2025. I think it's 2024 um, whole, like, Bellator versus PSL champs. So I think that's going to be a great thing. I think these people coming in together are going to do it. And I wonder where it's going to go from there. Like, PFL is going to do another tournament if they're just going to do fights. I mean, the tournament aspect is definitely interesting. And I understand why they do it because they want exciting fights. You can't go in there and have a boring fight. Like, you got to try to finish the dude. If you just win the fight, you only get in like three points. You need to go in there. And, but later rounds, it sucks because, you, you know, if you finish the guy in the first round, you get in, you get in a, a six points right off the back, and that helps you. You know, I'm mean, with the whole tournament aspect and how they do it. So I think PFL is going the right route, and they're doing it in a cool way, too. They're not just buying Bellator. It's like, all right, now you guys are PFL fighters. They're going to do like Bellator versus PFL, and then eventually just me- mesh them together. I think it's pretty cool. I think it's an awesome day, and I think. Uh, they're doing it right. They do uh, pay well. And I think one of the biggest things that I think is a little different from the UFC, and I'm trying to knock the UFC, I loved my career in the UFC, was, you know, they treat the fighters a little bit better than what they know, what happens in the UFC, I think, with certain things in the background. From what I've experienced and you know, having my team, Shane, uh, team and Shane Burgles in it, I think it's a cool thing. I'm looking forward to see uh, the whole 2024 year, how that goes, and, the, you know, champs versus champs yeah for sure and you know speaking of 2024 and championships i mean one of the accolades that you also previously had was that cffc bantamweight title just talking about like the upcoming new calendar year like how much of it is an express goal to you know get that title shot i mean obviously that's predicated on the opportunities being presented and we were talking about the difficulties with getting you matched up in certain regards but do you foresee that as being something that could transpire in 2024 yeah, you know, I, I guess it, it it all depends what happens. I think, you know, I, 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 after our fight, Howard and I, we, you know, coming in and fighting the n- number one guy, obviously it sucks going to the draw and no one winning the fight. But I think, th- I hope he wins. He deserves it. And him and I fight. I know there's, you know, I don't think there's bad blood, but I'm like, there's some unsettled, uh, un- unfinished business there. And then with uh, 55, I heard Louis Palomino's looking for a challenge. Oh, fuck, I'll give him a challenge. So I think my biggest goal right now is winning this fight and then going in there and fighting these dudes. You know what I mean? And I'm, and I'm really, um, I'll, you know, I don't talk shit, but I believe whatever I say. And some people think, oh, I was talking shit. I'm like, nah, I just think, I think Louis is actually a great, uh, I don't think he was. The, I think he did okay MMA, but he's doing way better in, in, in bare knuckle because he's a better boxer, and that'd be great to go up there and, and fucking give him a challenge and give him a run for his money, and I think I could beat him. And I mean, I've seen his fights. He's very... It's, it's a lot of the guys he's fought can't box at his level, and I believe I could box at his level. So it'd be cool to do that. It'd be cool, you know, 2024 goal is, you know, be a double champ at 45 and 55. Obviously, it all depends on how this next fight goes, so I'm focused on this fight with Jeremy. But then from that fight, you know, just see what happens next and, and work to that goal. I mean, that's a, that's a goal on my list right now to do and uh, and go from there. And I'm hoping that after this win, it should be in the right direction to have one of those conversations to have the title fight. And then whatever weight it is, maybe and then after that, get that belt and obviously go there. You know, that's... My long-term goal, my short-term goal now is to be Jeremy Stevens next Saturday. For sure, but I guess in even talking about that, because you were discussing the Stevens fight almost in a way where it was like he was kind of looking at this bout being at 155, but how much does it kind of serve that master of wanting to be a double champion, just getting like a lightweight win? And I mean, if you get your ideal outcome and it's like a statement kind of win on such a big show, I mean, could really, you know, serve that master to get that lightweight title shot. If you're having those difficulties getting certain fights at featherweight, like how much of it is circumstance, I guess, versus like maybe a conscious effort to kind of, you know, get your footing in it in BKFC's 155 pound division. I think this happened to me a couple of times. There are people always, there's always, there's always something that happens like you think is negative and what you have to find and look for the positive all right, like, all right, it kind of sucks I'm not fighting at 45, but I'm fighting someone that's my style and has a big name coming in here at 55. And that opens up, oh, maybe I can fight at the belt there at 155. So I, with everything said, I think everything happens for a reason. And I don't really try to look at the negative. I just look at it like, these are the positives that came out of it. This is fucking awesome. Let's rock with it. Hey, you know what? So all of a sudden you're doing this. I'm like, oh, there's talks about 55. Palomino needs to avoid it. Hey, get this win. Maybe 55, you know, I get the belt 55 instead. 
with the weight difference, was training all that, it just makes me 10 times stronger. I don't have to deplete myself or cut a lot of weight. I mean, I still got to cut weight, but I don't have to cut like 25 pounds instead, you know? But I could train a lot, a lot at a, I could train and don't deplete myself and train and feel even stronger and better. So I think that's a huge positive already off the back. And I think one of the biggest things, and always people talk, talk about it here and there, um, is this weight cutting, you know, weighed in the day before, and then all of a sudden this guy coming in 40 pounds, 30 pounds heavier. So I think that's one of the biggest talks uh, is, you know, I don't think it's going to change, but it's a part of the sport. And a lot of these guys cut weight and come in big. So, hey, I'm just looking forward, you know, I have to cut weight. I don't have to cut as much weight, but I still got to cut weight, and I'm still going to come in pretty big, so I'm going to enjoy it. Yeah, and talking about how, I guess, the body feels different in, like, a different weight category, I'm curious what the differences in your body might be from an MMA camp versus some of your BKFC camps, because a lot of the guys that come to BKFC from that mixed martial arts background, like, they really talk about how their body just feels so much better with, like, the grappling training component being taken out. Are you finding that also? Huge. I think I think when people are at a certain point with MMA, um... You know, everybody's a little different. You know what I mean? Sometimes, like, this is kind of a great deal found my, you know, found my lap. My management, actually, my management handled the deal. It was a great deal. I'm like, couldn't say no to it. But now, being in these, uh, uh, being in this BKFC where I only have to box, I don't have to wrestle, grapple, all that. It's so much better on my body, and I can see a longer career. Whether if it was MMA, you know what I mean? If I was still, you know, I'm not saying MMA was never out, but I haven't done it for a couple of years now. If I was still doing MMA, I don't see a long career with that. But with Bare Knuckle, I can see a lot longer career because I can do it more. It's light. It's definitely a lot lighter on our body. And I definitely think, you know, you got MMA fighters that could box that are in BKFC. And, you know, you got a couple that came in that aren't, haven't done that well. And they just know it's not for them. And then you got the boxers in BKFC. And definitely the biggest draw is that these MMA fighters come in and got that wrestling, that dirty boxing background. They can do boxers. At the same time, these guys that do MMA that are coming in BKFC could go a lot further because I've been to a lot of boxing gyms. These guys box two or three times a week. They even do them when they don't have a fight coming up. I'm like, now I realize, like, at the age of 35, 40, 45, by their punch truck, I'm like, dude, you're, you're like, like, as an MMA fighter, you never really do a lot of sparring, at least, you know, the evolution, not going back to, like, you know, GSP and and Silva Days and Forrest Griffin and all that, those guys sparred all the time. They killed each other. You know, the evolution was, you know, we don't spar. We drill hard, but we don't spar unless we got a fight coming up. These guys, when you go to boxing, they're boxing two or three times a week, every week, whether they have a fight or not. And I'm like, yo, that's that's a lot. That's a lot of trauma to your head, you know? I mean, CTE, CTE is not like something that's just all made up. It's real, you know? So I think there's a long career for it. I encourage people, you know, if you got a mentality like myself or Eddie Alvarez or a fucking Mike Perry, go to BFC, PKFC. It's definitely, this sport is huge growing. It's it's awesome and it's cool because you could be around for a longer time. Dave Feldman's been developing it. I think keep doing these big cards. It's just going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. More names are going to want to come over. And I can't see how, as an MMA fighter, transition to BKFC you wouldn't enjoy it because of the train and the train is just 10, you know, you heard Ben Rothwell talking about it. It's just 10 times better on your body. You could do a lot more of it. You could have a longer career and you could still enjoy what you love to do is fighting. Yeah, no, I mean, well said, definitely an incredible path for, you know, people to pursue if they're so inclined, but I feel like I'd be remiss if I didn't get your thoughts on the main event. I mean, you mentioned the two names right there, like, not necessarily asking for a prediction, per se, but, I mean, definitely a... I got you. Listen, I love Eddie. Eddie's a cool dude. Mike Perry's an awesome dude, too, but I think Eddie's going up. Mike Perry's going to be bigger. I think, at the end of the day, I think, no offense, Eddie, I think Mike Perry's got this one. You know what I mean? It's definitely an awesome fight. Uh, you can't count Eddie out, but we're looking at it, and just knowing everything, I feel Mike Perry's got this, especially, you know, jumping up to that weight class, you know, it's a little bit more weight that, uh, that, you know, Eddie is giving up on that with Mike, because Mike's a pretty big 170-pounder, so I got Mike on it, and again, I never cut anybody out, but I got Mike Perry uh, taking that taking that fight. 
And I mean, you mentioning Rothwell a bit earlier, very exciting co-main event he has with Todd Duffy coming up too. Yeah, I don't know Todd Duffy. I think fucking Ben Rothwell is going to kick his ass. Plus, I got to go, you know what's funny is that, you know, first round management, it's pretty cool. We got myself, Ben, and Mike. So I'm going all, all our guys, you know what I mean? At the end of the day, I'm going with our management. I think, I honestly think Ben's going to fucking knock it out of the park. I'm not, not, not that it gets tired, just, hey, it's Ben, you know what I mean? He's already done unbelievable. He loves it. He's game. It's not like he's coming in and it's his first fight. He's already fought before. He fucking loves it. You know what I mean? I, I think he's got it. You know what I mean? I think he's got a great mentality for it. So I, I'm going with Ben on that. And I guess just one of the last things I kind of wanted to touch on while I have you, because I saw a couple different posts where I was seeing that you were a fan of this person's music, but it seems like the connection is even deeper. Like, it seems like you're buddies with Brantley Gilbert, country musician. Like, what's the deal with all that there? Um, so when I first got into country music, was I actually, my first concert was a Brantley Gilbert concert. It was my first kind of like him at Luke Bryan where I was introduced when I was like, 21, 22, and I'm like, damn, I like this music, reminds me of, like, I grew up on ACDC and Metallica, I grew up, I listen to everything, but, like, my rock and stuff like that, I'm like, I like this vibe, and then his music, I would listen to him, I'm like, yeah, I like the fight, and he's got some good fight music, he's also got some good, like, you know, love songs, not gonna go wrong, you know, every, every guy has a soft side, too, and, um, at one time, at one point in my life, my management actually, uh, my older management company was able to set up a meet and greet, and we, I got to meet him, and that night, we probably talked for like three or four hours, just bullshitted. And there were guys who were like, oh, it's time you got to go. Um, he had to drive to his next event. And I was like, holy shit, I couldn't believe what time it was, like one, two in the morning already. I'm like, hey, man, it was good talking to you. We'll stay in touch. From there, we, we stayed in touch. And believe it or not, I mean, you know, we're friends and like, you know, we talk here and there. And we might not go, we might go a month without talking. And all of a sudden we talk and I'm like, it's like kind of where we left it right back off. And we just bullshit. And, you know, you have those friendships like that. I look at my wife, I'm like, who are you talking to? And, and my wife and his wife have became really good friends too, which I, I was like, what the fuck? So <laughs> we we are good friends. We've been on vacation together. We've done the things together. We hung out. So um, I was hoping he wouldn't be able to come out, but he's got a concert and stuff at that time. So I was like, ah, shit, it'd be great. But he's an awesome dude. Um, I can't say it. But he's just a really cool down-to-earth guy. And sometimes you guys meet people and – they're famous. I got to meet a handful of famous different people from Al Pacino to Mickey Rourke uh, to Gene Reno and stuff like that. Some of the people I met through fighting, some of it was actually just on my school in the city and I had their kids as students. And they're all really cool people, you know what I mean? Most of them are like really cool down to earth and him and I just became really good friends and from there um, I, I never thought it would go any further just me and Gray, hey, how you doing? But we really... Uh, in line, we have the same views on a lot of things, and we grip on a lot of stuff. So it's a really cool thing. And at the end of the day, I love his music. He loves my fighting, and so it's a it's like one of those things where we just kind of bond over stuff, and it went that way. I uh, I owe his brother. His brother's looking to get in PKFC. I told him, listen, one day I will be able to train you and get you in. And his brother is fucking nice dude, but ruthless. So I think that would be a cool a little addition to PKFC as well, but. From there, um, yeah, just a great friendship turned out from that. I and mean, he's a cool dude. And uh, we talked here and there. And, uh, you know, usually we're trying to set up, like, you know, a little vacation with our kids. Our kids are not that far from, uh, they're not that different in ages. So it's, you know, it's a cool, thing, cool dude. And nothing but props and, and success for his, his career and all that and the way he, the way he's going. Well, that's awesome. I didn't expect there to be so much detail to that, but I love that connection and everything. I only ask because I was also like a country music radio host for a few years before I really started kind of getting heavier into the combat sports coverage and stuff like that, at least like writing about it and covering it. So yeah, cool that there's like a bit of a combat sports country music kind of connection there. Yeah, man. I mean, you know, you see a lot of these people, they're fucking fans and they, uh, they like the fighting and, you know, not, not all of them like, I'll do it. Even the football players and stuff like that, but they love to watch it. I mean, it's definitely one of those sports where it's a fucking hard sport. And to make it in this, if you can make it into fighting and you could get at the high level and whether it's MMA, BKFC, whatever you're fucking doing, if you can get at that high level, man, you can do anything in your life. That's for sure. It's fucking not easy. It's hard. It's a lot of grind. And if you can make it at the high level, like I did, Mike Perry, Ben, you have a lot of grit, and you can fucking do a lot of things, that's for sure. 
yeah, well said and a great lesson for sure. But it's been great getting to talk to you, man. A lot of great insights ahead of what looks like an awesome fight. But just in wanting to be mindful of the rest of your schedule, is there maybe a final parting thought you have as we're kind of wrapping up, Jimmy? Yeah, fucking tune in December 2nd. Me versus Jeremy Stevens. You got Ben Rafa, Eddie Alvarez, and Mike Perry. It's going to be a fucking awesome card. You got three title fights on that same night, too. I'm, dude, I'm looking forward not just being in there for that, but actually watching other fights. I can't fucking wait. I was going to say, I think that's a shared sentiment among anyone that's kind of following along with what's going on and very excited for BKFC 56. And thanks so much for coming on Bare Knuckle Radio ahead of this Jeremy Stevens fight. And looking forward to seeing the throwdown when it happens, but you enjoy the rest of your day there, Jimmy. Thank you for the time. I appreciate your time. Thanks for having me, and I hope we talk to you soon. This episode of Bouts Talking Bouts is brought to you by Bare Knuckle Betting Shark. Winning parlays. If you're looking for them in BKFC, you got to be checking out BK Bet Shark. Here's the thing. $50 buys, you get a personalized bet slip. It's based on your own budget. You can be flexible. It is what works for you. And this guy's got the receipts. You can check out all the winning tickets. You can peep them, and you can do so at Bare Knuckle Betting Shark. Check him out on Instagram and get with it. Got them personalized betting slips going on. $50 buys.